The first application we want to talk about with area between curves is called the Gini index. Gini index is a single number that's used to tell us about the income distribution in a certain country or in a certain region. So the first thing we want to do is start off with a curve that would represent absolute equality of income distribution. And this would be this blue line, y equals x. So what we can see if we constructed a table of values for this line, y equals x, where our x-axis represents the percent of families and our y-axis represents the percent of income. When x is 0.2, y would be 0.2. So meaning 20% of families have 20% of the income. If we looked at, jumped up to 80%, the y value would be 80%. So 80% of families have 80% of the income, and if we jumped all the way up to 100% or 1, 100% of the families have 100% of the income. So we have this perfect equality in terms of income distribution. Now what we could add to this graph is what's called a Lorenz curve which would be a curve that gives us the income distribution of some particular country. So the Lorentz curve will look different for any particular country, but essentially it's a curve that dips down below this line y equals x and gives us some area in between those two curves. So now if we expanded our table of values to add a third column, for our Lorenz curve, now we could look at a value like, again, 20%, and see that that's paired with a y value of about 0.5, or 5%, 0 0.05 or 5%. So instead of 20% of families having 20% of the income, we say 20% of the families have only 5% of the income. If we jumped up to 8%, the way I've sketched out this curve, this is maybe about 45%, so 0 0.45. So instead of 80% of families having 80% of the income, 80% of the families only have 45% of the total income for the country. And when we get up to 1, we still have 100%, because at that point we're considering everyone. So, but the idea is, with the Lorenz curve, as we get further away from this line y equals x, we're getting closer and closer to... Um, economic inequality, where fewer and fewer people hold more and more of the wealth. In particular, what we're going to be interested in looking at is the area between these two curves. So what we can see is as the shaded region would get larger, that would mean this Lorenz curve is getting farther and farther away from that line y equals x, and closer and closer to this curve y equals zero, which would represent absolute inequality. Meaning one or just very few people would have all of the wealth for that country. As our Lorenz curve, L of x, gets closer and closer to y equals x, we're getting closer and closer to that absolute equality. So what we're going to be doing is calculating the Gini index given some Lorenz curve. And the Gini index is going to be calculated as 2 times the integral of 0 to 1 of x, which is that line for perfect equality. So x minus f of x dx. And where we have this expression f of x, that's where we would generally plug in our Lorenz curve L of x. So what we're going to be doing is calculating and then interpreting that resulting number. So our resulting value will fall in a range somewhere between 0, which would represent absolute equality, because in that case our Lorenz curve is mapped directly onto that line y equals x. Or we could have values as large as 1 for that final result, meaning we have absolute inequality. 
So again, if we go back to looking at that picture, the smaller this area is, the closer this curve is to this line y equals x. So the smaller the area, as it gets closer to zero, we get closer to equality. As it gets larger, we're getting closer to this idea of absolute inequality. So as an example, we could look at finding the Gini index for a Lorentz curve, x to the 2 eighth power. So this would be 2 times the integral from 0 to 1 of x minus x to the 2.8 dx. So again, we're taking that line y equals x, and we're subtracting out this function that has smaller function values, x to the 2.8. So we would want to calculate or integrate 2 times x minus x to the 2.8 for x equals 0 to 1. And we can check that that integral statement looks correctly, looks correct, whether the 2 is on the inside or the outside of the integral means the same thing. And we get an area of about 0.474. For a more complicated expression, y equals x e to the x minus 7 halves, our approach would be the same. We would take 2 times the integral of 0 to 1. We would start with y equals x as that larger function, minus x e to the x minus 7 halves. So all that is in that exponent for e to the x. So our expression mostly stays the same. We just update this second function, which will become x e to the x minus 7 halves. And we get an area of about 0.94. So getting these results is nice, but so far, really, we're just coming up with arbitrary values. What we want to do is put this in some context to see the types of questions that we can answer. So in example six, we have Lorentz curves for both Bangladesh and India. We want to find the Gini index for both of these countries. So this would be integrating, taking two times the integral from 0 to 1 of x minus 0 0.893 x to the 1.41 dx. So taking x minus that Lorentz curve for Bangladesh and taking 2 times the in integral from 0 to 1 of x minus 0 0.9x squared minus 0.4x. So we need to make sure we're subtracting that entire expression or that you go ahead and distribute that negative through. So our first integral, the Lorentz curve was 0 0.893, x to the 1.41. And we get a result of about 0 0.259. For the second part, for part B, our Lorentz curve, and I'm going to put this in parentheses to again make sure that negative gets distributed throughout that expression. we get a result of 0 0.8. So our first Gini index for Bangladesh is 0 0.259. For India, we get a Gini index of 0 0.8. And then we have a question that's asking us to interpret something about those two numbers. In this case, which country has the most equitable income distribution? In this case, our answer would be Bangladesh. Because since that Gini index is smaller, it means that area between that curve for perfect equality and our Lorentz curve is smaller. So we're closer to that idea of perfect equality. 
because the Gini index in this case is closer to zero. So once we can calculate the Gini index for two different countries, we can make comparisons about them to determine things about the equity of income distribution, which then might lead to different conclusions in a business world about the type of business that might be conducted, the type of productivity that might occur in that country, um, but other types of economic or even socioeconomic um, factors about that country.